Hey everyone, Magic Flying Potato here. Hope you're doing well. And I'm going to go over a brief beginner's guide for Terratech Worlds to get you into the game. And uh, so it's not so much of a struggle. So we're going to start off with just looking at the beginning tech. As you can see right here, this is what we start with. So if we look down at the bottom left hand side of the screen, that first icon right there, that is your tech heat level, uh, but that will affect how your tech performs. If we look over to the next icon, it's a battery with two lines in it. That is your core tech power. So that the two lines are coming from, if you look at the cab right here, this is what is providing those two lines of electricity. The third one is another battery, which is this piece right here. So that gives you a third line. That is the use of your, some of the parts on your tech, such as your resource laser right here. As we use it, you can see these lines are dropping. Once they reach zero, you will not be able to use that power source, just like this, until they recharge. Just let go of your button, you can see they recharge rather quickly. Underneath that, you see a wrench with an arrow and a three. That's the number of repairs that you can do while you're out exploring. So if, if you crash, if your tech gets damaged or destroyed by another tech, you can hit the R button up to three times to repair, totally repair your tech. After that, you're gonna respawn back at your main base. So if we hit the tab, this is your tech menu. We'll go ahead and look right here. So this is what's in your inventory. Again, this is your inventory. This is your core inventory for your scout cab. You start off with nothing in it. Right here is your cab crafting. So you've got onboard crafting, which gives you five basic items to craft, which is a generator, the workbench, the tech yard, a small platform, and a small ramp. And also as you hover over them, you can see what items are needed to craft these. So if I'm hovering over the AC carbon generator, it shows you right here, it provides power. If you look down here underneath the photo, it takes five seconds to craft. It requires six iron. And in order to craft it, you just click on it and it will start crafting. If you, if you click on the wrong thing, you have five seconds to cancel it out. Just click on the icon right here and it will cancel your crafting. Next item over is your weapons grouping. So you have up to four different weapons grouping. And as you gather more either resource lasers or different items, they will come down to here and you could group them into one, two, three, and four. And it, depending on where, how you group them is what button you'll push to use them. Tech snapshots, if we look right here, this, this is the way you save text that you want to swap in and out of. So right here I have, I've created one prior to this, but as you can see, I have insufficient blocks available to craft this tech. And I'll get more into this once we get onto the tech yard. This is where you save your text and you can respawn them in as different texts. Right here is your objectives. You've got your base objectives. If you click on the objective itself, it will tell you what percentage is done what you actually need to do in order to complete this quest and the uh, the rewards. You could pin and unpin the quest as well. I don't know how to repin it. Come over here to deliver, same thing. You have delivery contracts and you also have finished ones. The finished ones will tell you what the payout and reward is. And then you have your, your combat missions right here. Again, tell you what your progress is. And then the next screen over is the, the Blockpedia, which just tells you about the different parts in the game and what they're used for. Ones that are a regular picture means that you have discovered them somewhere in the game or you have, you've actually made them on your base or you've picked them up from destroyed techs. Right here is a respawn button. If you find yourself getting stuck and you need to respawn, Go ahead and do that but the thing is if we look at my inventory we lost all our cargo as you saw that box drop so if you look on top of the tech right here that is your radar so the wherever the blue that big blue thing is that's where your main tech yard is at that's where you that's where you placed your tech yard for your base this pink icon is your equipment so you just follow it as you can see, it auto tracks it. In order to get your cargo back, you come over here, you look at it, you interact, and you just take all, and it will put it all back into your cargo bay. We will now look over at your tech reactor and this side, the right side. So tech reactor is, this is the power of your tech and the current loadout. So 
The lighter the tech, the more power your tech has. As you can see, I'm at almost 50% capacity. There's also a number indicator right here out of 100. So I'm at 46 out of 100. So you have two different visual icons to let you know what's going on with your core power and the weight of your tech or how many pieces you can put on it. Here is your recharge. So I'm recharging at 200 per second. As you can see, the battery is, is showing. This is auto recharge. So you don't really have to worry about recharging. It's auto recharge. Here is auto repair. It is currently active. So if you're out running around and you see your tech starting to glow green and it, it will it will glow green in and out. It's like it'll, it'll pulsate in and out. That means your tech is re auto repairing itself. This is if, if you get damaged by mining or when you're in combat, you will see the glowing green icon on parts of your vehicle that have been damaged. Right here again, tech temp, same as what we saw over on the left side in the mass of your tech. So if you hit your R key, your R key is your auto repair. L key turns and turns on and off your task. If you look on the right side of the screen, you can see your task coming on and off. So if you want your task on or if you want them off, just hit L. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about gathering resources. So as you're out here looking around, you'll see little items like this on the ground. And if you hover over them, it will give you a scientific description of what it is. Once you start mining the stuff, you use your, your left mouse button to use your resource laser. If you look at it, it will tell you the health of it and how much it weighs in the yield. And once you destroy it, all you do is go up to it and it will auto collect. And if you want to know what it is, one that we just uh, destroyed is aluminum. I, I do have a bunch of stuff in my inventory. So this uh, this brown looking rock right here, if you come up and hover over it, it says hematite. Okay, so for this one, for certain certain resources, they do have breakpoints in them. And that breakpoint will actually make it easier to harvest. As of right now, I don't have a resource scanner. So when you use your laser, if you go from one side to the other and you see these fissures, these cracks in the rock, cut along that crack, it will cut the rock in half. And it will make gathering this resource a lot quicker. So there's another one. And you will hear it crack when it does. To gather carbon, it is any of these. The, what They look like huge mushrooms, but they are trees. These as well. or So these need to be hit by resources. These ones like this on the ground, if you just run through them, they will break. So for these trees, if you move your laser, your resource laser up and down, you will see where the the break points are at, on these. And the main piece that gives you the carbon is this right here. One thing you do have to watch out for, do not get too close when cutting trees. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. Let's see if it happens. Okay, so it didn't happen on that one. I'm going to try to make one of these trees fall on top of me. Like that. So if you're trying to get resources from one of these, it, it falls on you, especially these big ones up here. It will just, it can and will destroy your, your tech completely. And you're going to have to respawn back in and come back and get your part. So be careful when mining these trees right here. So right there, my tech is completely destroyed. If I hit my R key, as you can see, I just repaired my tech. And I'll get my items back. So be careful. And depending on how your tech is set up, you may or may not be able to climb steep mountains like this. The heavy, again, the heavier your tech is right here, the heavier your tech is and the more reactor capacity you are using for the weight, the less power it will have to come up mountains like this. In order to get copper, copper is up here on these mountains. So if you're looking for copper, it is this green port right here. You're going to have to look higher up on the mountain ranges. As you can see, there is another set over there.
and my suggestion for when you're mining copper, I don't want to roll down the hill. Because you're on these mountains, I would say get below the copper because when you're mining it, it does have a, a tendency to start rolling down the side of the mountain. If you place your tech below it, it will roll into your tech so you don't have to chase it down the mountain or make sure you're not sitting on rocks or something because your tech will slide down the side of the mountain as you saw right there. And resources are all over the place. You could actually mine rocks for more resources. And then out in the ocean, you do have these right here. Those give you chlorine. So if you need chlorine, watch out for plants. This is one you'll find everywhere. That You'll find different plants in different biomes. But watch out for this one because if you get close to this one, it does that. And uh, as you can see, I just lost my wheel got destroyed and one of my parts is about ready to get destroyed. But if I hit my R button and then if I hit my space bar, it will flip my tech back over. Now I'm down to three repairs, but we could take care of this as well from a distance. Just like that. And it does have it does give you different resources, carbon and some other resources. So while it is dark, we're going to come over to the base. So this right here this piece right here is the tech yard this is the core of your base so if you come over here when you when you first place it's going to ask you to claim it so claim it this will become your respawn point this is also key for repairing your tech and rebuilding your tech with parts that you find so if i hit the tab key as you can see it hovers it turns my tech around so it will repair everything on my tech it will return the number of restores if you use them out in the field and also we have a bigger menu up here on the left side, top left side of the screen. A lot of it is the same as you can see. Right here is where you can respawn a tech. So like I was talking about before when we were out in the field, I have this tech right here. It said insufficient parts. Now I have the parts because they're stored in my tech yard. So if I want to change to this tech, I just click on it. And that's it. That's the new tech. This tech is overloaded. We'll, we'll check that out as soon as I click off of this screen. But uh, use your, your mouse button. Go back and forth. You can roll. And you can change out your techs. The type of techs that you want to to use. If Again, if uh, some of these are from old game saves. So I do not have the parts for these. I wish there was a way to to delete old tech saves. But uh, again, this is early access. So things will change as the game is uh, worked on. Okay, so right here, this is important to know right here. So when you complete your missions, you got to come over to your base and click on the rewards button right here is where you actually claim all the rewards that you have gotten while you're doing your missions. If you don't come over here, you will not claim your rewards. Therefore, you won't get money and you won't get uh, you won't get parts like this. This is a I don't know what that is. It is a. It's a tractor beam, which is that right there. And as you click on the things in your block, PD, it will tell you the blocks that are needed for producing it and if you also hover over it will also tell you if you look right here in the blockopedia as long as you don't click on the item so once you click on it you'll lose what the description is but if you hover over it like this so this will tell you this tells you that this is a tractor beam is designed to handle and manipulate all sorts of resources the resource laser is the staple and resource harvesting basic defense weapon a hailstorm sacrifice accuracy for increased rate of fire medium battery block and it also tells you if you look it also tells you does has any modifications to what that block does right above it will also tell you the armor the health and the pounds and the reactor load which is important when building your tech so if i click out of this screen right here as i was talking about the tech reactor i am just overloaded as you can see right here this means that I have too much weight and my reactor is going to be 
slightly affected. Not so much. My tech temperature has raised. We don't want the tech temperature to get too high because it does start affecting your tech. Also, if we're looking here as we're raised, if you look on the right on this side of the screen, you can see that there is a new option that you did not have in the field. You have your block catalog. If you click on this and it's empty, this is the storage in your tech yard. You could store parts, tech parts only in the tech yard. The way to do that is I will go ahead and click on these to bring them out into my tech itself. So when I click on it, I just click to get everything into my cargo, which is the alt. If you push the alt key down and then your left mouse button, that is move all. If you uh, do a control left mouse button that is just moving one item that comes in handy when you want to move things into storage like this so if we come over to my tech cargo now we can see that there are all kinds of tech parts in my current tech cargo so if we've gone out and battled and then come back to our tech yard and we're not going to be using a lot of these pieces or we want to work on our tech click on your alt key and just click on any tech part like that and it will move it directly from your tech into your tech yard storage if you look down here these parts did not move because this is in a small cargo hold on my tech so i would have to move these separately so if i do a alt left click it moves all those parts into my tech yard it will not hold resources like this so i'm clicking on any of these resources and it the tech yard does not store resources it just stores tech parts so i'm going to come back over here to the catalog and each part does do something if you hover over them you can see what they do a grayed out or darkened tech piece means that you have it but it's currently not in storage so like this right here i actually have these pieces sitting on my tech so it shows that i have them but they're being used or they're currently they might have been lost out or destroyed out there to, uh, exploring the world now if we overload our tech so i'm gonna pull individual parts because i know some parts are heavy i'm gonna pull that I'm just gonna pull random parts and then come back over here. So I'm going to show you what happens when you overload your tech. So I'm going to put this up. And if parts don't fit, you just got to spin them around until they do. So this part right here, this is a, what is this? This is a mobile lightning rod. So if I place this on my tech, look at my tech reactor. It goes from green to yellow. So I take that off. It's green. Also, my recharge rate is no, it's not 200% because, or 200 because I do, it, it is overloaded. But if I put this piece on my reactor turns red this is 120 over 100 my recharge i am now not recharging at all i've lost my auto repair i think i've, I've lost my restores and my tech temperature is at 134 degrees celsius which is going to cause damage to my tech i'm going to add another piece on just just randomly put them on So now I am at negative 200, so that means I am losing charge, not auto repair. My tech is now at 189, it's 126, and yeah, I am in the red. So if I drop my tech down off of the build platform, you can see that because of the heat, my tech is already starting to burn up. It won't turn green because it will not be able to, it will not be able to auto repair. And if you look at my battery, I have no battery power because I'm at negative 200%. It, it, the weight has used all my energy. I have, it, it's blinking with the no auto repair and I do not have a uh, repair. And again, you look over at the temperature gauge and it is up there in the red. So that is the tech yard. This is an expansion of the tech yard. Tech yards start with a hundred uh, slots. This is a tech yard storage, which clicks right onto the side of your tech yard. This adds another 50 slots. Now let's talk about your base. So the first thing you're going to build is this AC carbon generator. It uses carbon. So as you're out there exploring, plant life gives you carbon. And for this, you just drag and drop carbon into it. And it will say if, if, uh, if this is your first time placing this, it will say restore grid power. So you click on that button and then you click on machine on or off. When it is on, it is always using power. When it is off, it does not. So when you're out exploring, you don't need to have this on unless you're producing something. Turn it off and it saves on carbon. 
The next piece you're going to make in the, the guide is the workbench. This is actually made on your tech, as you remember from before. But come over here, cab crafting. That is this part right here. Parts do need to be placed on platforms in order for them to work and get powered. The, the platform is the power source for all the parts. So when I put this on the platform, it powers everything that is sitting on the platform. If I take something off the platform, it will not work because it will not have power. There are probably ways of connecting things to the grid without doing that. I have not gotten that far into the demo as of yet. So the workbench right here, the workbench produces your structure pieces, such as launch pads, refineries, fragmenters, carbon generators. So this produces everything that is connected to your base. The next piece over that you'll have to produce is the supply fabricator. The supply fabricator is your, your ammo supply maker. And the way these some of these machines work, such as the workbench, as you can see, you have your input, you have your output, you have autofill. So say I want to make a wind generator. I click on it. It tells you in the little picture what parts I need. It will also tell you if you hover over it, required parts to craft. So when I want to make this, I click autofill. If you have the appropriate resources in your cargo, your tech cargo, it will pull these, the required pieces, put it into input, and it will take five seconds for this thing to make the wind generator. Make sure that your power is on. If it's not producing, turn your power on. And as you can see right here, it did not make it, even though my machine is on. Right here, it's saying that I do not have enough of the iron ore. Everything else is, has a green checkbox. This does not. So I need to refine some more iron in order to produce this. I did make two more pieces of refined iron, so I'm going to go autofill again. As you can see, now all of this is checked off. It put the pieces in, and this goes. Now, if I wanted to make multiple of these, if I had the resources, you just click autofill as many times as you want to make something. So if I wanted to make five, I click the autofill five times. As long as I have the resources, it will make five wind generators. And from there, if you want to place it down, you just open up your cargo, drag, and drop it. And now it is it's in motion. Supply fabricator, so say I wanted to make uh, 50 rounds. I click on autofill five times. Turn my machine on, and it's going to make 50 rounds. As you can see right there, my tech is green, uh, glowing, and we had some red parts. Uh, on those parts were almost destroyed. My tech is auto repairing. Just a quick thing while this is happening, during the lightning storm, if you see a light, if you hear the lightning storm, ooh, my tech has almost been destroyed. All of these areas that are, are, have the little bolts of lightning right there, that means that is where lightning is going to strike. So as you're in a lightning storm, do not stay stationary. As soon as you stay stationary, the lightning is going to strike you and it can destroy you. And you're not safe on top of your base unless you built cover for your base. So if I click this, this auto repairs my entire tech. So we come over here, there's my 50 rounds. I'm gonna just go ahead and do a control click and it put it into my inventory. This is used for the small guns, such as that small, this small machine gun that's sitting on top of my tech. So just uh, as, you're, as you're playing, you'll have the, the progression of missions will tell you to place these different parts in. This is a refinery. This takes your raw ore, like this and turn it into refined ore so when you're when you're needing refined ore you have to do the refinery this one works a bit different than the other ones this does not autofill as you can see so say i wanted to make refined refined carbon i would actually have to take my refined carbon drop it in here and it will start making the refined carbon as long as it has enough resources. Once it runs out of the needed resources, the machine will no longer make the refined ore that's in there. One thing that this machine does as well, it does make copper. So if you're out there mining and you get debris, debris is used to make carbon. So 100 debris makes 10 carbon. All you do is have to drag and drop that in there. So it took that 100 debris and made 10 carbon. It's not very efficient, but it does 
make the debris that you have come in some use. If you don't want the debris, just you could just drop it and leave it out on the uh, in the world. One thing to know about Tex, they are waterproof and they are amphibious. So as you can see, uh, I'm not on land, but you can also see that as of right now, this is extremely slow going out here. So yeah, you can, you, your tech is amphibious, but it's super slow. As long as you're on a beach like this, your tech will go faster. All right, let's go ahead and talk about your, your scan feature, which is this right here. So this does, this is not a resource scanner that we have. This is a enemy tech detector. So if you, if you're scanning around and you, and you can't see, but if I'm looking, you can see that there is a tech there. So I hit my scanner. You could tell on my little uh, screen right here that there is a tech in front of us. And here comes the lightning again. So fighting a tech, when you're fighting a tech, my suggestion is either try to take out the wheels or take out their cab right away. If you take out their wheels, it slows them down. But if you take out the cab, which is that the centerpiece right there. I'm going to take out another wheel. Again. So now he is pretty much. Okay, he's immobile. So if I come around, I'm going to get hit by lightning. So if you come over, there's two ways of, of, of collecting an enemy tech. You can actually sit next to him. And if you hit your tab key and spacebar, it will hover you so that you're in now in build mode. You're not safe in build mode, but you are in build mode. And if you do this while you're next to near a destroyed tech and you start putting their parts on the color of their parts. So like that had that tech was yellow. And as of right now, if you took the parts and put them onto your tech, they would stay that color. As soon as they go into your tech, they go into this standard gray and black color for a lot of the pieces. Some of them will stay orange and black or something like that, but that may change in the future again, demo. And during the demo here is one other thing, as you can see right here, there is a, a, a hexagon, Um, looks like a shield. So this is a dome. Right now they are limiting us within this dome because Again, this game is still being uh, worked on, so they want to keep us contained within the dome. And we're going to have plenty to do during the demo inside the dome. So if we go up to the edge of the dome. So like this, it, it is a wall. It is a barrier. You will not be able to get through this barrier. Again, this is just to keep us within a certain area that they have worked on so that is the, the dome we are currently in a dome and uh can't go outside it but again it, it, it's not gonna matter because there is still a lot to do there's still a lot of good, fun gameplay so yes this is going to be the public demo which starts during the steam next fest starting february 5th to the 12th you'll be able to play the demo after the 12th the demo will be over and uh no longer be able to play but so Definitely get it while you can, enjoy it while you can. Let me know in the comments if you guys are liking this game or not. And on that note, I am Magic Flying Potato. Enjoy the demo and uh, until next time around, I am Oot. Y'all have a good one.